the Earth wasn't always the way it is now. Continents, oceans, atmosphere, life have all changed over time. Some things are revealed to us, while others have sunk into oblivion as if they never existed. As the scientists looked further into the planet's past, they understood more clearly all its variability and metamorphoses. On a scale of billions of years, land turns out to be very similar to water. The Earth's crust rose above the waters of the world's oceans, only to dive back down again. Then crawled its way as separate pieces over the planet's surface, only to be reunited in supercontinents. According to various estimates, Earth has seen at least six different supercontinents over the course of its existence. And now we'll travel into the ancient past, three and a half billion years ago, to get to know each of them. In this video, you'll learn what a supercontinent is, how many were there in total, why did they disappear, and finally, what happened to Earth three billion years ago. This is the history of the Earth's ancient supercontinents. Scientists define a supercontinent as a solid landmass containing all or nearly all continental crust of the planet. Such a puzzle is created on a planetary scale at least once every several hundred million years. Our journey will start off with the most mysterious supercontinent we know almost nothing about. Even its sheer existence is speculative. However, it is quite scientifically sound and intriguing. Plus, there is quite substantial material evidence. According to scientific estimates, Valbara was formed between 3.6 and 3.1 billion years ago. It remained stable for supposedly half a billion to a billion years, up until the big split between 2.5 and 2.8 billion years ago. Scientists have proved the Valbara's existence by geochronological and paleomagnetic studies between two Archean protocontinents called Cratons, the Kopval Craton in South Africa and the Pilbara Craton in the eponymous region in Western Australia. This ancient land has seen some epoch-making events. According to one of the most popular theories, it was Valbara that witnessed the emergence of life on Earth. And it was in the Archean period that a dominant race of cyanobacteria existed, which would subsequently oxygenate the Earth's atmosphere. Quite surprisingly, the fact that there were no complex life forms in those days is rather good news, since the fate of any complex life would prove to be very sad. About 2.023 billion, plus or minus 4 million years ago, a huge asteroid about 10 kilometers across hit the Earth. It formed a crater 250 to 300 kilometers wide. The crater has remained to this very day and is located 120 kilometers from Johannesburg one can see the whole city of Vredefort seated in its center. It's from this city that the crater and the fall of the asteroid, the Vredefort event, borrow their names. And now our time journey will bring us back between 3 and 2.8 billion years ago. During that period, another supercontinent was finally formed, called Ur. No one knows exactly what happened to Valbara, but at least the scientific community believes that Ur's evolution has nothing to do with Valbara, which developed independently. 
plume processes were the drivers of the continent's formation. They are some hot streams in the Earth's mantle, which move rapidly from the Earth's core towards the surface. Convection currents in the mantle don't prevent such plume currents from erupting. Parts of this supercontinent formed some regions of Australia, Africa, as well as Madagascar and India. It is in India that the largest parts of Ur are now found. The Aravalli mountain range, the Darwar Craton, the Bundelkhand region, and the Singbum region. Scientists have a reason to believe that Ur was the only supercontinent on the planet for some time which makes it eligible for the title of a supercontinent. And here, it's worth mentioning that the prefix super does not refer to its size. Ur's actual size was probably smaller than that of modern Australia. Ur witnessed the very beginning of the greatest transformation of the planet's atmosphere. Photosynthesizing blue-green algae consistently started to fill the atmosphere with oxygen, leading to the so-called oxygen catastrophe, when all forms of life on Earth were either forced to change beyond recognition or perish. But without this catastrophe, complex multicellular life wouldn't have existed. Most probably, the further evolution of Ur had a very dramatic fate. However, it wasn't for very long that Ur could boast its supercontinent title. A little less than 2.8 billion years ago, a new supercontinent called Keenerland was finally formed. Ur was then downgraded to one of its to one of its smaller parts. This supercontinent was formed in the Neoarchean period about 2.72 billion years ago. It is notable for the fact that it mostly contained neoplasm. Plume processes pushed hot magma to the surface of the Earth's crust, gradually accumulating cooled lava at the bottom of the world's oceans. In the end, these deposits reached the water's surface. Small islands appeared, which kept growing, turning into cratons. There are different opinions as to Keenerland's margins. In any case, its shape transformed greatly over the course of its life cycle, from looking something like this to hypothetically looking like this. Keenerland was formed after the merging of several cratons. If you remember, the Pilbara and Kopval cratons formed the Ur continent, which joined the just emerging cratons, namely the Corellian and Upper Craton. The upper one was the largest craton among those formed in the Archean period. It still exists today, covering Quebec, Ontario, southeastern Manitoba in Canada, and northern Minnesota in the United States. In those days, life was still just emerging. A team of French scientists from the Paris Institute of Geophysics managed to find traces of life in stromatolites aged about 2.7 billion years. They were primitive, unicellular organisms, which wasn't that surprising. It was impossible to overcome the unicellular barrier under those conditions. It took dramatic environmental changes for those epoch-making events to take place and push evolution forward. And they didn't take long to arrive. According to established theories, this third supercontinent in the history of our planet had witnessed a severe cataclysm. Once again, the prospects of life at that time were highly questionable. This time, the fragile biosphere of the planet suffered a double blow. The oxygen catastrophe was in full swing. Blue-green algae kept on photosynthesizing oxygen. 
At first, it was all spent on oxidizing oceans. But in the end, more and more oxygen began to fill the air. Back then, all life forms were anaerobic, meaning they did not breathe oxygen, which was deadly for them. Everyone who could not adapt became extinct. The oxygen catastrophe also caused global climate changes, namely the oldest global Huron glaciation. At that time, the air contained a sufficient amount of methane to trigger a greenhouse effect. Oxygen in the atmosphere caused the gradual methane oxidation. The reduction in the greenhouse effect led to a drop in air temperature. The Huronian glaciation sent life on Earth into a deep knockout for 300 million years. However, as we know, the night is darkest before dawn. The Earth remained a lifeless ice desert until the end of the Riocene period, ending 2.1 billion years ago. At that time, a new supercontinent, Columbia, otherwise known as Nuna, completed its formation. And complex life forms had a second chance. Hop on to our virtual time machine in the next episode. We'll tell you what Columbia was like and what supercontinents existed before the Earth's land formed the current continent's outlines.